Uh, yeah, so far it's been pretty good. Uh, men have kind of gone up and down a little bit on the rankings. Um, take care of business. Um, but I think they'll rally up um, at the, the conference meet this weekend. Um, women have been pretty consistent. Um, really good group. Lot, lots and lots of talent. Um, a few of them still haven't really hit their peak, um, what I consider the very best mark of the year. Um, you hope championship season can bring that out of them, but you know, these days you just kind of flip a coin in the air and hope for the best, but, but uh, talent is there. Um, the team chemistry is really awesome. That's kind of the thing we've been really emphasizing and working on, is being one team, just united. One common purpose is trying to go out and win championship, and so far they're they're absolutely 110 uh, percent committed to doing the, the very best for Texas. I right, take a question there. Maybe? You mentioned kind of how how close the team is, and I know a lot of people maybe look at track and field as more individual, but I guess how important is it that everybody sort of you know rallying together at this point of the year? Yeah, I mean, it's extremely important. We, we, our culture was, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't like the word culture. Our chemistry was not the very best um, last year. And then considering how well we do, you just have to wonder um, how much better we could have done. Actually, CDC was the one that, and this great genius uh, sitting at his house told me, well, you know, Sometimes it's just addition by subtraction. I thought, what in the hell does that mean, man? <laughs> you know, but, but it made sense later on is that, that, that you find those that don't gel and you remove them, and the ones that are left behind sort of gel, and some people that might not be doing well end up being really well. We had some people that were okay, and when we move some of the negative distraction, uh, selfishness, they became superstars. So that's kind of... The most important thing for track is we all work out together. So even though when you get, get in the blocks, you're by yourself, but on a day-to-day -day basis in the weight room, on the track, so if you have six sprinters, they all have to line up and do the same workout and they have to sort of share the track. Now, if you have somebody that sort of takes that workout to the next level and, you know, you, know, you beat me in practice, blah, 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 that, that kind of negative energy sort of just like, it's like a fungus. It just keeps growing and growing and eventually uh, you can't stop it. So. That's kind of what's really different this year. Um, they really spend a lot, a lot of time together. Um, there's a lot of pranking, which I'm, I don't turn my back to anybody anymore on this team. Last time I turned my back, I had a, a chalk handprint on my butt the whole day. And I'm not sure which one of them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But they, there was a lot of people that came behind me and, hey, coach, hey, coach. And before I know it, somebody said, why do you have a chalk handprint on your butt? It's like, what? So that, that stuff like that is 24-7. And we got a radio, Raheem, uh, Marcellus Moore. I think I'm kind of deaf by now, but he brings the radio and turns it up as loud with the speaker as he possibly can. I hate music at practice, but this group has been so cool that I guess I can grow on me. But they play music, heavy beat, all practice and it's I get home I'll have this ee hissing sound in my ear so it's why do you hate it pardon me why do you hate music I just can't hear myself think I just it's, it's just all I hear is just drumming and and they don't really play the very cleanest music so it's like golly it, it, but it's non-stop but it, it does change the atmosphere it just does make them happier I think uh, uh, if you've been coaching long enough you understand that these days you know, having the kids in the right mindset, feeling good about themselves and feeling good about what we're doing is far more important than actually doing anything. I know you guys have had a lot of, you know, impressive performances this year, but just to see kind of Julian going out there and continuing to lower her record and, you know, Marcella setting the new record, uh, what's it been like kind of watching those two, you know, set new marks for y'all? Yeah, we, we'd like to take credit for, for it, but... Every rock record book is being rewritten this year. I, mean, I don't know what's going on. So I think maybe a little bit of that extra year, COVID year is going on. So there's a lot of older uh, athletes who should be gone that, that are hanging around. But, but the, the record books, the NCAA record book is being rewritten. Ours is significantly <laughs> changing uh, every day between Marcellus, the DM Army. Every weekend something crazy is happening. But most of these kids are on their COVID year. So they're probably a year removed from where they should be. Uh, they should probably be going pro by now, but but it's exciting to sort of, you know, like you, you have a history of a program like Texas, who's been around forever, and you have these very best athletes in the world who have Olympic gold medals and whatnot, and to have somebody come in and, and sort of change that, uh, it's pretty cool to know that that we're moving in the right direction, that that as a team, as individuals, we're significantly better than we were in the past. So. 
those school records are huge. Um, they, they change the trajectory of the program, but most importantly, uh, uh, the recruits see that and that becomes an appeal that, that hey, this is a place that you want to seriously look at. Do those two superstar category, do they set the tone for the rest of the team? Julian Alfred is a mouse until the gun goes off, so <laughs> there's no tone setting there. <laughs> uh, she's just on the weekend, she's a warrior, but but on the day, everyday practice, she just leads by example. Uh, Marcellus, on the contrary, um, I don't think he's ever met a word he didn't like. So he's he's nonstop jabber, jabbing, and, <laughs> and, and he's nonstop talking. I'd, I'd probably say those who have the biggest impact is him, um, and Lene is probably out there as well. But but we have some people that don't say much, um, like Rashida and Kenny Simon. You can never heard him say anything, but when the gun goes off, there's a significant difference in, in, you know, like in who they are. I, I actually call it the alter ego. So we've been working on trying to create an alter ego for everybody on the team. But if you look at it, you got Spider-Man, you got Iron Man. There's not a superhero out there that doesn't have an alter ego. So we're just trying to create this idea that who you are as a person, your tendencies, your mannerism, whatever it is, has to change when you compete. And so during Alfred, it, you, you walk by her and think, oh, she's just a sweet girl, and the gun goes off, and it's all hell is breaking loose. So, <laughs> so she sort of tapped into her mm -hmm. also ego in competition. Who's somebody, <clears throat> men or women, that has really come on since the start of the season? They're just... I would say the one who actually, um, it, maybe not come on, but sort of embrace who she is is Rashida Adelike. She has a. Uh, she didn't want to do the 400 when she first got here. Uh, so I, I, you know, some battles are better to lose as a coach. So I decided I was going to lose that battle and, and, and keep nagging at her. And eventually she, you know, cracked the door and I was able to, to kind of convince her to do it. But but uh, you look at what she's doing. I mean, uh, every time, every weekend she competes, the whole world stops because you know she's just turned 20, and you're looking at the marks that she's putting out there. So she, she's the one that I would say is sort of blown up a little bit. Um, Julian obviously um, is doing what they say, Julian is doing Julian things. Um, you know, every event we put her in, she seemed to find success. Um, I'd say Creighton Carosa and Yusuf Bizimana um, have really sort of kind of embraced kind of what we want out of them uh, this year. We're looking forward to this weekend. You know, what, what events are you looking at as maybe that'll be the most pivotal to, to winning the titles? You know, they, they, every event, can, can impact. You know, if you look at it, if you win by five or six points, anybody that scored five or six points had an impact on the event. So um, I'd probably say the long jump. Um, we have three really good long jumpers uh, that they could score upwards of 20 points. Um, with that large number of points, that event become very important because if you end up getting 10, that minus, you know, 15 for us and plus 15 for the field. So the events that like, we're supposed to do well, you have to do well, like the big point event. There are one or two points here and there. A guy get a point, another guy doesn't get it. It doesn't really matter, but but these uh, um, these big point events, um, we sort of have to take care of business to do on that. Um, I think it's going to be closer on the men's side. Um, Tech has a really good team. Our women really should just take care of business. Um, not as much concern, but, but our guys have to – have to go to war and then battle. And plus, it's, it's, at, it's in Lubbock, so they love us there. So um, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, competing there. Maybe we can do a, leave them with a parting gift. <laughs> Who's your best long jumper? Uh, Stacy Brown, Jr., uh, consistently been our, our best long jumper, triple jumper, even though the freshman Solomon is sort of catching up. But Stacy's going to be a huge part of, of, of us winning because he has the ability to potentially – when both jumps, uh, he just has to put it together. Maybe you're, you're a guy, obviously, that, that came from the SEC. You guys are heading back there in a few years. Just curious, you know, what, what your thoughts are on the move to the conference coming up in a couple <laughs> years. Yeah, I, 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 left, I left the Pac-12 to go to the SEC, and, whoo, it, it was a serious wake-up call. Um, you, you're uh, the level of abrasiveness, competitiveness, um, demands Kevlar jacket. I, I will say that. It, it's It's... <laughs> It's unbelievable. I mean, I love it. I think for me and my personality, I love it. I just love for people to put me down. I just love for people to, to <laughs> express Alex of Texas. I just, I love it. I, I, I actually feed off of that. So 
people want me to fail, just don't say anything to me and ignore me. I'll, I'll probably screw it up. But <laughs> if you keep talking about what we can't do, man, that, that wakes me up in the morning. So I'm looking forward to it and, and preparing our kids to do that. So I'm being a little bit more uh, demanding, uh, putting them in, in, in sort of bad position in practice for them to kind of get out of it because that's what it's going to require. I mean, it, it's – it's a different. It's a different league, and I think the coaches there are also a little bit different. There's, there's a, I don't know, ego. If you want to call it that? Uh, um, you know, some people have huge egos and arrogance. So uh, a little bit different of a league, but but I think it's it's cool for us to go there. I mean, the the reason why I actually left the Pac-12 and Stanford to go there is because I got tired of people saying, "Yeah, you're a great coach, but." You know, the SEC is where it's at. You know, this SEC, you can't coach in the SEC unless, you know, you're a really good coach. So I decided, hey, I was going to go to Kentucky to worst them in the SEC. And, and so that's sort of how I'm wired. So when people kept telling me, yeah, you won a bunch of Pac-12 championship, but that's nothing like the SEC. So that. So how that, long do you think it'll take a couple more? Do the horns down. You think they'll get that pretty quickly? Uh, we're going to walk in competitive. My, my team will. I, I have. I have no um, – it, here's why. We're already competitive in the NCAA, so it's not like we're a, a Big 12 champion in top 30 in the NCAA. So we're already competing against the same school in, in the NCAA. So we're already – I mean, last year we were first and got second in, in the other three. So we're already sort of in that realm where we're competing at the very high level. So I don't have to really make a lot of adjustment uh, to say, hey, now we got to step it up. Yeah. Coach, the NCAA is as high as it gets. You know, we got you – know, Rashida was you – know, World Championship final, I mean, Julian. So we got people who are top three, top four in the world. So we have the the athletes who have been challenged, tested, pushed beyond their limit. So, and that's what the SEC is going to do. And when we're sort of battle ready, if you want to call it that. I know you guys got um, Brian Thompson on the roster. Um, I don't know if he's, he's competed or. I'm just curious, you know, what he's brought, and you know how maybe that might help him going forward in just terms of his athleticism, working the offseason. He's an unbelievable athlete. Now, the, uh, <laughs> you say in football, you mess up and sock probably makes you run for punishment. We just run for the hell of it in track. So <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's a little bit shocked by the amount of running just for kicks that, that, <laughs> that we do. Um, but right now, I mean, I almost completed him indoor. He, he was that close. He was very close. He was just had some deficiencies, and his technique was not there. You know, indoor, you're running on a sort of a lopsided track. So... If you don't know what you're doing, you, you can tear something up pretty easy. So I thought about it because uh, he's an unbelievable starter. I mean, the gun goes off that guy out of the blocks like like a cannon. Um, but mechanically, he wasn't there, um, and he was just a little bit overwhelmed by, by the amount of running. So I, I just didn't want to take a chance with a kid that good and, and kind of get him injured. Um, but I almost, I almost ran him uh, this weekend, but I, I just chickened out.